In Paris, tourism is an important part of the economy. Similarly, across Europe and many parts of the world, countries have had to mitigate the impact to tourism. Greece is a country in the European Union, and 20% of its economy is made up from tourism. When COVID-19 hit Europe, Greece closed its borders to protect its people. But on July the 15th, it reopened again to the world in the hope of reviving its economy, but at the same time, having to maintain its effectiveness against the pandemic. I spoke to Gigas Meliokis, a professor of hygiene and epidemiology in Athens and an advisor to the Greek Ministry of Health, to dig a little more into how Greece is balancing these two competing priorities. What experience and knowledge have you relied on in order to inform your country's approach to COVID-19? Because in fairness, Greece has handled it pretty well, relatively. Mm. So I'm a clinical virologist and an epidemiologist at the same time. So um, one of my research interests is about super spreading, uh, which is um, a phenomenon that some people spread the virus much more than the rest. And we knew that that was the case for um, SARS coronavirus, which was the most closest thing that we know uh, to the SARS-CoV-2. Now, um, one of the things that we tried to do here in Greece was to shut down the places where super spreading events might happen. So, um, and I could give you a couple of examples, like uh, an early school closer was happened, and then uh, we tried to close down some uh, businesses uh, because of the effect of the super spreading and the massive viral load that we had in the middle of March. Um, and okay, of course, the, the, the lockdown that was much earlier than uh, that happened in the, our epidemic course. These three things happened early, how is Greece managing that dichotomy? How is Greece managing having to open its borders up for tourism, yet at the same time trying to contain or prevent a significant phase two? Currently, we are monitoring incoming populations in a way that if there is a resurgence of COVID-19 in another country, we will be able to sense this even before they sense it within that nation. That happens because we screen a lot of people um, randomly. So for example, we were able to spot the Serbia resurgence one week before that was coming out from the country. And we had it on the spot. And we can see, we were able to see the resurgence in Bulgaria and Romania from the screening that we're doing in, in, uh, north, in our northern border. So I think, if there, is a, um, if there is a resurgence in any other country where that we have a significant inflow, we will be able to spot it at the borders. The other one is to uh, minimize transmission in the community. And this can be done currently by a broader uh, use of face masks. Um, so we're trying to convince the uh, professional people who have many contacts per day to use face masks. And also face masks needs to be used in all the uh, places where people are in contact with people that they do not know, like, you know, the buses or uh, planes. Obviously planes is an international thing, but also internal. So wherever someone is in contact with persons that they do not know, close contact, we are trying to um, ask people to use face masks. How are you contingency planning for the opening up of tourism? So the, the, the plan is that um, there will be many uh, uh, on-the-spot molecular tests in different islands. Then there are islands that will be transferring samples to these islands, and then if we need more samples to, to be tested, these will be transferred in central labs. So there's already a contingency plan with respect to testing. There's a contingency plan with respect to transferring tourists to specific places. Now, if a, if a tourist is, um, belongs to the high-risk groups, they will be transferred to, uh, to, a, a, to closer to a setting that can, be, can offer uh, more specialized support like intubation, etc. If a tourist is a low risk, they can stay in a COVID-19 hotel because they have, you know, very uh, very mild symptoms. So it will depend 
on the risk profile of each tourist where they will stay uh, if they get infected and if they get diagnosed. Was there anything in particular that stands out from your previous experience that was particularly effective on the first wave and might be effective looking towards the future? Yeah, I think the most important part of uh, the intervention is to break super spreading events, to, to understand where this happened, because we know now that more than 80% of the transmission happens from less than 20% of the people infected. This means that we can, if we can actually target these people, this 20%, we can actually break down the epidemic. And this may, might, this happened that we know now, for example, most of the European transmission that ended up in being deaths happened in, in hospitals, happened in healthcare settings. So if we can target these places and protect them, then we will bring down the death rate and also the infectivity rate. Really interesting insights from a perspective inside Greece. Really appreciate you joining me. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much. I really appreciate it.